It is a well-known fact that Chernobyl disaster created the challenges that were never seen before. The fighting of the consequences of the accident was massive, so this required a joining of forces of numerous people and organizations, and all of that required an enormous amount of data processing job. The data became a blood of the giant organism of the zone, and still it is. Up to the present day, in the zone it's possible to find some rusty remains of original equipment from that hot days, and uh, this hardware is far beyond the repairable condition. But they are enough in duct to understand what exactly has been used and how some particular task has been done. We are known retro computing enthusiasts, so we got an idea to go even further. It's not easy, but we often could find some same type of equipment elsewhere in Ukraine and also abroad. So we are restoring it and at some point we will be able to even run some original software from that times. In the case of Dugar Radar everything became actually even more interesting, because uh, analyzing of the remaining documentation of computers installed in the Chernobyl 2, they brought us to a more complete picture of how the system actually operated. So you are welcome to join us at this project that we called Computers of Chernobyl. Join us on our Patreon page to unlock the full and complete version, link is in the description below. But for now there is a necessary historical background. So when we talk about the epoch of 70s, 80s, we should keep in mind that the technologies of the times were pretty different from what we have at the present day. There is a common belief that Soviets didn't have anything going, focusing only on cloning the western equipment. And although it's partly true, in fact there were a lot of original systems created in the past, though often they were incompatible between each other. In the mid 60s, in the Soviet electronic industry starts a discussion about creation of one unified system of computers. In the same period, in the United States, approximately in uh, 1964, uh, IBM introduces IBM 360. That's an architecture of mainframe that became actually a Western industry standard. Among other features, these mainframes had one essential advantage they used 8 bit byte. You may ask, wait, can it be any different? In fact, yes, it can. And that time it was even not standardized yet. Because, for instance, a flagship Soviet Bessem 6 computer used 6 bit byte, there were 7 bit cases, and so on. And even in the condition of the Iron Curtain, it was considered uh, unwanted to keep the software totally incompatible with the West. So, this, along with some economical and also political reasons, led to idea to take IBM 360 as a basis for our own Soviet ecosystem, unified system, or shortening by as acronym YES-AVM. The design work started in 1968 and at some point integrated most of the countries of the socialistic bloc, also in production. For instance, Bulgaria and Germany made the tape and disk drives, and actually you up to present day can see them as a part of Skala mainframe at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, they made by CEIS. Poland made terminals, Czechoslovakia made various peripherals, such as uh, terminal keyboards or punch tape readers, as this one, and so on. But nevertheless, while in the West the concept of personal computers slowly started to emerge, uh, the Soviet Union was still in the epoch of mainframes, so these large centralized multi-user machines uh, that could often occupy a floor or a data center. So uh, later they slowly started development also in the direction of personal computers, but this was not an equal run, but more like a kind of a chase. Because in many cases they needed to get the western processor, which was not so easy in a condition of embargo, and then slice it layer by layer and then understand how to make its copy. Uh, so this was always losing over time. In both cases, of mainframes and Soviet PCs, the exact technical solutions were Soviet made, just the architecture has been retained. However, in the case of the software, it was often a western copy translated to Russian language. For instance, there are YES mainframes at Duga, and with some of you we visited them once, uh, so they run at the VM360 operation system, and uh, it was just remade to a Soviet system of virtual machines, SVM. And here is a small spoiler, because we actually got a data dump from a real tape reel with SVM, uh, the same as Dugai, and successfully launched it in an emulated environment, so this we will show you in the future as well. In the mid-80s, inside a unified system, appears a branch of personal computers, 
a code name at ES18 and some index, and all of them were IBM PC compatible and generally were running on the Soviet cloned versions of the Intel 8086. So about one of them that was an important workhorse at the Jupiter plant in Pripyat we will talk in our very next video. So subscribe, join us on Patreon and see you next time.